So another abstract that um, gave us some long-term follow-up data that I think could be potentially practice changing is abstract 1006. Uh, so this was the long-term follow-up of lifalusal, which is a cryopreserved autologous till therapy in patients with advanced melanoma who had previously progressed on prior therapy. So this study used adoptive cell therapy using tumor infiltrating lymphocytes or TILs. The trial was a global phase two open label multi-cohort multi-center study that basically studied this um, centrally manufactured cryopreserved autologous uh, TIL product called Lifaluso. Uh, patients with unresectable metastatic melanoma who had prior uh, progression on checkpoint inhibition or those with a BRAF mutation had progressed also and BRAF inhibitor therapy were allowed on the trial. And at ASCO, they actually gave us some updated results on cohort two specifically. So it was... Um, about 66 patients, um, med median age of 55, mean number of prior therapies was over three. So this was a significantly heavily treated patient population. And they'd all had prior anti-PD-1 and a, you know, a proportion of them also had prior targeted therapy. And they had high tumor um, burden at baseline and that was, uh, um, reflective of their elevated LDH, as well as the number of target lesions. So these patients um, underwent surgical resection of, um, of a tumor lesion. Um, the patient then underwent non-myeloablative lymphodepletion with chemotherapy. In the interim, the tumor resection those tumor infiltrating lymphocytes were extracted and they were then expanded. And then they were ultimately infused back into the patient after the lymphodepletion therapy was over. After that, the patient received six cycles of, or six doses of, of interleukin-2 to enhance the anti-tumor um, activity of the TILs. And, um, and then that's what the trial is now reporting uh, results on. So of the 66 patients, the objective response rate was 36%. And I, you know, I think that that is quite remarkable given how heavily pretreated these patients were, given the fact that in our practice, we don't generally have a lot of options for these patients. So for them to have an objective response rate of, of 36%, I think is, is quite significant. And additionally, 44% of them had stable disease. So if you look at the subgroup analysis, there were no differences in patients who'd received prior anti-CTLA-4 or prior targeted therapy. Uh, their BRAF status didn't seem to matter. Their PDL one expression didn't seem to matter. Um, you know, I, again, I think this, this potentially could be practice changing. It may be logistically challenging for some institutions um, just based on the logistics of the therapy. But I certainly think it it's a viable option to consider for our patients. It's a, you know, it's a commercially available product. It may just be accessible to more patients than past uh, TIL therapies have been.